So. This Russian uh, hair cutter, boy, she butchered me last time. My hair. You gotta still, let us see. You can't. It still sticks up in the back. You can't talk about it I can't on say a video. Russian. No, you can't talk about it and not show everybody, she man. She had Russian fingers. They were way too fast. Okay, but listen again. You can't All talk right. about it without showing us. <laughs> so you know what that means, right? All right, there we go. He's does keeping it, it real. Does it still stick up? Oh, it's like the little um. Uh, yeah. What's that dude name? Buck? Not Buck. What's the alfalfa? My hat. Alfalfa. My hat's been on all morning too. You think it'd be smashed down by now? Wow, man. Well, you know what y'all just stepped into, right? You just stepped in some bumper stick of faith. Wait, are we recording? Welcome to Bumper Sticker Faith. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here, man. Yeah, I guess here. I'm here. It's early in the morning, but um, you know, early. I'm up. Thanks for joining us today. Again, this is Bumper Sticker Faith. My name is Sam, and I'm joined here with Lewis. And I want to do a couple announcements. First, as we start, if people don't know that we have a YouTube channel, we do have a YouTube channel, and it's at uh, YouTube. Just look up Bumper Sticker Faith. I think there's some other bumper sticker stuff in there. Oh, you but, ain't uh, plagiarized nothing, did you? No, we didn't. I oh, think okay, we were right. first, uh, you know, mentally, maybe not in actuality. If somebody steal our idea, man, it's going to be it's going to be not good. And then we have a uh, podcast. We are on iTunes as well, so if you go to iTunes, you can listen to us there and rate us and leave a review. How we they going to find us on iTunes? Oh yeah, go to iTunes uh, and type in bumper sticker faith. We sh- we should be in there. <clears throat> under Bumper Sticker Faith. And uh, we're also trying to work on an Instagram account. And we'd just love to get your feedback. We, we'd love it if you'd help us and share the show. And uh, we're working on quality and thinking we're getting uh, be- better with audio and video. And along with that, we're going to try to release as much as we can, much as we can, perhaps uh, weekly as well. And if you ever have any questions, our email is bumperstickerfaith at gmail.com. Nice, nice. We got an email, huh? Yeah, we do. Dang, man, we stepping on up in the world. I think I'm the only one who's emailed it, though. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to shoot an email to then. <laughs> Thank you. I need some more email love from Lewis. So I thought today we would talk about love, all right? Hmm. And as we talk about love, uh, I want to give it the old bumper sticker spin. Okay. Because out there in the world... Uh, the culture defines love, especially these days, one way. And I would call that the bumper sticker way. Okay. But I want to point to another deeper, richer understanding of love. You know Valentine's Day right around the corner, right? It is coming. So it's a perfect time to talk about love. So, you know, if you're looking for Cupid to make a stop at your house, (laughs) hey, that might be the best time of year to expect them to come in a couple of weeks. And and what what I want to share today will uh, it it'll boost your love life in a way. It really will. It'll make your love way more thrilling. So is this podcast for singles? Is that what you're saying? Uh, it's for everyone. Okay, all it right. won't boost it in ways that you think. But I do want to add this extra ingredient to help uh, inflame. Uh, our sense of love, especially of God's love. You just can't imagine what's going through my mind right now as you use some of those <laughs> yes, adjectives. I, yes, I can. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but you yes, know, this is a this is a show where we glorify Christ. So we will keep those um, worldly comments and thoughts not on here. So, but if you got an imagination, you can figure it out. So, if we were to ask, what does the how does a culture define love like love right now? Like true love Mm -hmm. what would you think well i think first let me set the timer so we don't just be on here for an hour (laughs) okay check how do i think the culture defines love i think the culture defines love simply like the rom-coms you know romantic comedies like boy meets girl there's an attraction physically maybe emotionally um and then like it's all about sex, S-E-X, yeah. you know, and it's like at least at least my pre-Christ days, mm-hmm. that was the thing in my mind was that sex equals love. 
You know, also like giving gifts or showering people with money equals love. And yeah. so it definitely didn't have anything to do with God. It had to do with fleshly desires and, and tangible material things. And then about making yourself the most desirable that you can be in order in order to impress or to woo or to win. Man, yeah, yeah. Right. And 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 then if you had that person, maybe that would make you more lovable. Or it's very surface kind of stuff. Yeah, because you're trying to court someone to be in a relationship yeah. with them, and you want to smell good. You want the fresh yeah. haircut, you yeah. know, and to not have like the little alfalfa thing in the <laughs> back. You want to be dressing and looking fly. You yeah. want the whip to be like shined up and looking yeah. good, whether it's a Benz or a Hyundai. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you're trying to impress a person, and the <clears throat> the bumper sticker or falseness in that is that's not the reality yeah the and then if 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 the relationship becomes serious which may lead to marriage yeah then it's like all bets are off like i yeah. can just be the grungy no haircut no shave yeah. dirty car the cologne runs out i'm not buying anymore because i don't have to impress you no more so yeah. it's almost like a facade the world to me love defined by them is really a facade hmm. is is creating an image of ourselves that really isn't true which is what a bumper sticker that's exactly right sam be. now if you were to get into the church world though huh. how <laughs> there ain't no bumper stickers in the church world yeah, there is uh there are if you were to get into the church world how would they define love these days you think man you know well because we obviously wouldn't say it's all about the show and the yeah, it's not material. Yeah, I'm not material. Yeah, I would say it would have to do with um, maybe our relationship with God, mm -hmm. our relationship with our husbands or wives if we have them, our relationship with our children, how we care for them, our devotion to going to church, to serving, mm -hmm. to giving, like all those things that we do. I think that's how the church would measure our love towards God. It would be based on what we do. Mm-hmm. And our love, how about our love for each other? Probably along the same. Man, you know, that's 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 probably where I see the biggest bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. You know, because people will say they love you, but it almost becomes so cliche. Like it's the thing that you say, man, brother, I love you. And it's like when we look at First Corinthians 13, mm -hmm. you know, like and we see how love is defined, like. Do we actually see relationships outside of our family, meaning with our church brothers mm -hmm. and sisters? Do we see those things in 1 Corinthians 13 happening? And I'm sure they do. Um, mm -hmm. I know in my personal life, not that much. Um, and so I think that there's a failure mm -hmm. in the church of living a loving life towards our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that Scripture um, encourages us to do. There's a couple of ingredients that I want to put out there for for everyone to uh, spice up, so to speak, our love life. There's a couple oh boy, of ingredients here, here that we find in Scripture, and I'm going to be turning here shortly to uh, Luke chapter 7, mm -hmm. but a couple of ingredients here. The first one is acceptance, and the second one is truth. Mm -hmm. Now, truth is kind of the, the one that comes out of nowhere, because when you think about love, you may, may not think about truth. But what I want to say is that truth is the thing that will really inflame your sense of love, to have that in there. So it's not just acceptance, because we love to, we love to think about love these days in terms of, well, just accept that person just how they are and just that's it. Well, ba well basically, the way I see it, so a phrase comes to my mind, yeah. a, a churchy phrase is speaking the truth. In love. in love, you know, so I think yeah. that's applicable to what we're saying. And that's a good thing. <clears throat> I think good. in a in a relational sense, <clears throat> excuse me, how we express love towards one another can be something as simple as like if you had a booger in your nose. Yeah. And I see it. And like, guess what? The world sees it, whoever comes yeah, in yeah. contact with you. But no one says anything. Yeah. And then your day goes by. You go in the bathroom and you see it. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> I've had this thing in my nose all day. I've talked to maybe 50 people and no one has loved me yeah. enough to say, hey, yeah. Sam, you know, you yeah. got a little boogie. I thought you know, Lewis loved on. me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, that, that may be somewhat embarrassing, yeah. but to me, that would be in a simple form, a way of expressing love towards love one another truth. because I want to tell you the truth about something, but mm -hmm. it's because I love mm -hmm. you, you know, and I think that's the point is speaking truth to someone mm -hmm. because you love them 
is perfect. You can speak truth to people and harm them and then not be in yeah, love. Yeah. But the point is that you love the person enough to tell them the truth. Yeah. And what I want to say is that as the person who has the booger on their face, <laughs> like when you are loved, still loved, despite that, uh, for who you are, there, there's no greater, there's no greater thrill mm. in love than that. Mm. So I want to start with a story or continue with a story yeah. that uh, that I experienced when I had um, some sins and falls in my life, and I was needing to confess them, and I and I wanted to share with my wife everything that I had done, done everything that was going wrong, and she knew that I needed to share. And it was hard for me to share because I didn't know, you know, what the reaction would be. Or, you know, you know how it is when you're trying to share something secretive with someone you care about. And I was sitting there struggling with how to share it. And when all of a sudden she just looked at me and she placed her hands on my shoulders and she said, just tell the truth. She said, it doesn't matter what you've done. We're going to get through this together. Just tell the truth. And as soon as she said that. That was like one of the greatest things someone has ever said to me. Mm. It doesn't matter what you've done, just tell the truth and we're going to get through this together. And that freed me up then to be able to share. And then after coming clean and after sharing the truth with her, then to experience that she still loved me, that she cared for me. You know, she, she, saw, she saw warts and all on me, but she still cared for me. And there's other times when I've shared with other friends, guy friends, you know, the things that I've done, you know, confessing to them and sharing with them. And when they still love me and care for me, it is such, it's such a thrill. It's, it's unbelievable because we tend to think that in order for people to love us, we have to put on the opposite mm -hmm. front. We have to paste on those stickers, get in our souped up Hyundai, as you like to say, <laughs> and uh, we need to be impressive and then they'll really like us. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, is that you're never more loved when you're more known and they know the truth about you. Now, it, it can go wrong. It can go the opposite. But the potential for it to go the best that it can go has to happen with truth. That if you want to experience more a more thrill in your love, yeah. in your relationship with God, in your relationship with others, then you have to bring out the truth. Yeah. And I think that's perfect um, because God set the example, right? Like he knows us more than anybody else, right? And despite our our sin and our shame and all of our um, things that we have in us, like he loves us. Yeah. And his, his expression of that love is coming down to earth in the form of a man and dying on the cross and shedding his blood mm -hmm. for our sins. You know, that's the truest and purest form and expression of love, love that this yeah. world has ever known. And, and it makes sense that God would love us in that way. And then in turn, we could be free and feel loved when we can expose mm -hmm. our sin to other people mm -hmm. and they know who we are yeah. and they love us despite that. So it's a snapshot of what we have relationally amongst one another and what God has done mm. for us. So, man, it, it only makes sense, yeah. brother. And chances are, like, if you don't feel or have that experience of love from God, if you don't feel that or from other people or from other people, just ask yourself, am I walking in the truth? Is there something secretive that that that, that I'm holding on to, mm. that I'm harboring, that I'm sneaking around about? Uh, just ask yourself that. I'm not saying that there is, but if you're lacking in love, j just inspect the truth and, yeah. and how much people know about you yeah, and that goes kind of with the cliche like the truth will set you free yeah that's you know? why that's how it does it because it right. does it yeah. frees you so the more we walk yeah. around with these lies in yeah. us or these facades or these masks that we put up like we're living in bondage yeah you know so if we want to live in true freedom yeah it's really putting your junk out there yeah you know it's exposing yourself i love that bondage and freedom and it reminds me of this passage that i wanted to get into from luke chapter 7 there's a, a dinner party going on with Jesus and some Pharisees and his disciples. And it says that they all take their positions at the table. And in that uh, time period, where you sat at the table determined rank. And uh, that's how the stage is set. Like who is the highest there? Who's the most important? Uh, and who's the least important? And the Pharisees are sitting there talking with Jesus and the disciples. And all of a sudden, 
this woman comes in and she's a notoriously sinful woman. It says that everyone knew who she was and everyone knew what she had done. So they knew the truth about her. But then she came in and she started to weep and wash Jesus' feet with her tears. She began to kiss his feet and then she began to pour this expensive uh, perfume, I think, or ointment onto Jesus as well and and do this extravagant act of love. Now, the Pharisees were sitting there, the religious leaders were sitting there, almost frozen in that bondage you were talking about mm -hmm. and judging her. And so just the the contrast of the picture there between the frozen Pharisees in bondage sitting there judging versus the active wom woman who is moving, she was alive, she was down, she was washing, she was weeping, she was uh, she was caring for Jesus' feet. There's just a big contrast there. And so they point this out to Jesus. They the Pharisees say, Hey, if you knew who this woman was and what she had done, you wouldn't you wouldn't stand for this. You know, you wouldn't just just um, you wouldn't just sit there and allow her to do this. You would maybe condemn her, put her right or whatever. Uh, but then Jesus says these unbelievable words. He says, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. So you didn't move at all. But she has wet my feet with her tears, wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. So there's a tie-in right there between how much of us is known and needs to be forgiven, therefore, mm -hmm. and our experience of love. And the more that people know, the more that the, the, of the truth that is out there, the more love that we will feel. She felt the love. The Pharisees didn't. So I see that as uh, this is just a great uh, picture of love to help us to go deeper. And, and as, you, as we like narrow in on the woman herself, I want to point out just a couple things about the woman herself. And that is uh, she's crying, right? Like she's, she's being very vulnerable. And when you're trying to uh, communicate truth with someone, it makes you vulnerable because you show them your warts, your wounds, all your flaws. You take off the facades. You take off the bumper stickers. So she's weeping. She's being very vulnerable. And then also she's uh, giving up this expensive ointment. So truth is also costly, right? Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to give up your reputation, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You have to give up yep. some things in order to walk in the truth. So truth makes you vulnerable. Truth may, is costly to you. But then also notice what she's doing with Jesus. Her priority in this is to wash his feet, right? So just think about it symbolically or, or, or just literally. She is taking her hair. She is taking the dirt off of his feet, off of the truth, in other words. Mm -hmm. I think that's a powerful picture of how we are to uncover the truth in our relationships. Like, Jesus is the truth, right? Mm -hmm. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth. And she's looking at the truth, and she says, oh, truth's feet are covered with dirt, and, and that's not right with me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my hair, I'm going to take my tears, take this ointment, I'm going to wash off truth truth because that's what's most important to me mm -hmm. and I want truth to be shining and I don't care if I get a little bit of, of dirt or mess on me I, I'm not what what's important but what's important for me in this relationship yeah, yeah. is to make sure that <sighs> truth is clean and bright and and pure just how it should be yeah. and in our relationships with one another that's the kind of attitude that I want to have I struggle with it mm -hmm. but I want to have that to yeah. make sure there's no falsehood <clears throat> between us. That <clears throat> truth is clean. Yeah, I would also like to add that <clears throat> in cleansing his feet, <clears throat> if it's Jesus, he represents truth. Like by her taking the covering off of the truth, it exposes it. Yeah. And so she's exposing truth. So in a sense, like when truth is exposed for everyone to see, um, it's liberating. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think that's good. In 1 Corinthians 13, and verse 4, says love suffers long mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i think about long suffering you know what i mean and and in a sense like 
you know, it's not the funnest thing to do to get on the floor, get on the ground yeah. and and use your own hair to yeah. wash someone's feet. You know, I mean, that's kind of disgusting and and all those types of things. But she didn't care. What was important to her was that the truth be made known so mm-hmm. that all could see and all could know. It says also in verse six um, that um, love rejoices in the truth. Mm-hmm. Right. So so wow. rejoicing in the truth. Right. Love rejoices in the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, like if we want to rejoice, you know, if we want to have joy even in our life, right, is yeah. living in the truth. Does your joy desire <clears throat> love? It does. Does your love desire joy? The yeah. Truth. Yeah. So I just thought, man, that's um, that's pretty cool. That's you know? really good. And so, uh, man, you know, I, I actually <clears throat> just this past week um, had an experience, <clears throat> excuse me, that, <clears throat> excuse me again, that was very different than I ever had. So mm-hmm. in Cook County Jail... Um, I was in prison, and I'm used to being around all types of people Mm -hmm. for a lot of years. And then um, I go into Cook County Jail and serve and do a Bible study. And so one of the units that I go in, um, a protective custody unit, which is a new unit um, that I've been in maybe about a couple months now. And there's a lot of outward homosexuals in the group, Mm -hmm. you know, like people who have like literally transitioned with their body. So now they look like a woman. And so then there's some guys in there that haven't made the transition, but they just came and told me, like, you know, I believe that homosexuality is okay. And then they say, what do you think? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So then it's like, okay, I know what I believe. Um, Doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what the Bible teaches, which I do believe. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had to first humble myself. I had to next think, how can I be winsome? You know, how can I give them a biblical, Mm -hmm. truthful answer in love that wouldn't be wouldn't be me rejecting them or pushing them yeah. away but giving them the truth of what God's word yeah. said and so and so I did that I told them that I believe that that it's a sin like any other sin um I believe it's something that if we consider ourselves a Christ follower that we should be abstaining from and even fleeing from the very appearance of sin the bible mm-hmm. says and that we shouldn't embrace that and I took them to some scriptures that said as much and I said, but what I want you to know is that you're welcome to be a part of this Bible study. Absolutely. You know, you're welcome to be here. Um, I'm not here to judge you. Mm-hmm. I'm here to dive into God's word with you and to learn with you, to grow with you, mm-hmm. and to help share some things that I've learned um, with you so that mm-hmm. hopefully you can grow in your salvation. First, have salvation, and secondly, grow in that mm-hmm. salvation and that walk. And so... Um, there were several gentlemen, both of them joined. And then just this past week, there's been this one who's made the physical transition <clears throat> and looks like a woman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, has kind of been on the fringe, you know what I mean, standing on the sideline, right? And and he chose to um, say this past week, you know, homosexuality isn't one of the Ten Commandments. And I was like, you're right. Mm-hmm. That, that's not one of the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. So then I went on to explain like sexual sin mm-hmm. and sexual perversion and the intent of sex and sexuality within the covenant of marriage. You know, mm-hmm. as best I could. I'm not a theologian mm-hmm. or a Bible scholar. I barely graduated high school. Um, but I just um, decided to share with this individual. And I said, you know, I have as much love for you as I have for anybody else in mm-hmm. this room right now. And I just kind of yeah. paused for a second and looked him in the eye, and I said, "You know," um, and then and then he said, That's "But great. what what if you were born like this?" And I said, "You know, I think um, everybody was born in the sin, you mm-hmm. know, with the sinful nature." And so then I just went on to explain um, that sin nature can take different forms um, mm-hmm. that um, may be different for each of us, meaning mm-hmm. there'd be a different sin mm-hmm. that maybe we're preconditioned to, mm-hmm. um, but nothing that we're born with. Uh, But it just being a sin that we all have to battle whatever that sin is. And because homosexuality is such a outright sin that people can see Mm -hmm. versus maybe some sin I have by thinking some things or looking Mm -hmm. at some things or some ways I act in my home Mm -hmm. that's not out of the home that people can't see. Mm -hmm. It's still sin the guy hates and it's going to be dealt with the same. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, my hope is that you can really understand and know who Jesus is. Mm And that you can embrace Jesus and the truth Mm -hmm. of what he says in his word. And that just like me having to fight sin in my life, that if you choose to accept Christ as your Mm -hmm. savior, 
that you'll choose to fight against the sin and sins yeah. that you have in your life. And he came and sat down in the seat next to me. Yeah. You know, and I was like, wow, man. That, like, lo that love moved him. Yeah, you know, and I just, yeah. that's that's new for me. And, and, you know, I told a friend this the other day, and he said, you know, you know, five or six years ago, would you have been like that? And I said, maybe eight or nine years ago, mm -hmm. you know, when I was freshly out of prison, mm -hmm. I would have been a little more truthful mm -hmm. and, and love would have been missing. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm just learning, like, you know, Jesus came and he ate and he slept in a house with and, mm -hmm. and he interacted with sinners, right? He came to mm -hmm. be with sick folks. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees and, and people, they were sick too, right? Yeah. But they didn't realize they were sick. Yeah. They thought they were well. So, you know, like if I want to model my life after Jesus, I have to champion and be for the people who realize they're mm -hmm. sick. And I need to love yeah. the sick and embrace them, not accept their sin. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus didn't accept a woman caught in adultery mm -hmm. sin. He said, I didn't come here to condemn you, mm -hmm. but go and sin no more. Yeah. Right. So he accepted her, but he didn't accept her sin. Yeah. And so like I and I think we as believers, we need to figure out how do we love sick folks. Mm -hmm. And in and in this passage, it's interesting that the, the people with the most condemning sins were the Pharisees right here, because mm -hmm. the people who, who were hiding their sins that kept them inside, that didn't show them, they didn't come out with them in the truth. And there was no hope for them at this point, but but for the person who that everyone knew their sin and came out, she was moved just like the the guy in prison was moved. It's uh, it's it's backwards than how we would normally normally think about it. Yeah, but ain't that so many things in yeah. the world? So yeah. many things the world teaches us yeah. is the complete opposite of what the Word of God teaches us. I want to close with this uh, quote that I found from. A Danish philosopher. Wow. Good okay. old Soren Kierkegaard. <clears throat> okay. Good old Soren Kierkegaard. I ran across this in uh, one of Is the... he still alive? <laughs> no. Another dead folk. Yeah, he died in like... A lot eight... of dead folks, man. 18, I don't know, 60 Ooh, or something. Okay. Uh, but this quote, it's, it, seem, it seems like it's really saying nothing, but it's so profound to me. Kierkegaard said this. He said, and I'll, I'll say it a couple times, but he said, For to love God is to love oneself. To help another human being to love God is to love that other human being. To be helped by another human being to love God is to be loved. Hmm. All right. So for for me to love God, whenever I love God more, in other words, whenever I'm most oriented to the truth of how reality is, whenever I love God the most, that's what it me means for me to love myself the best. And then he goes on, and to help you, to help another person to love God more, that's how I'm supposed to best love you. Mm -hmm. if you and, and if I want you to best love me, then you will, to help, you will help me to love God more. I just lo love how it's all <laughs> oriented around that, that anchor, mm -hmm. that truth. Yeah. And... and that's what I want to offer is the um, the contrast to bumper sticker love. Mm, amen. Amen. That's good. That's a good quote, bro. That's some deep stuff. That's it some is, deep stuff. It is. Pretty, we, we, <clears throat> we try to get some deep stuff on here every once in a while. Yeah. So so hof <clears throat> hopefully we've shared something with you all today that um, can challenge you um, to think about, you know, how you're loving yourself, yeah. and how you're loving others. Um, how we view lost people. Um, if you're a Christ follower, then you know the most liberating thing on this earth, and that mm -hmm. is Jesus. And you hold the key, in a sense, to help unlock someone else's pain, tragedy, and sin. And God wants us to love other people in such a way that we can help them know the Christ that we've accepted yeah. and walk in love towards him. Actually, I have, I have one more thought. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to riff on that for just a second. I, I, I recall that the great uh, Swiss psychologist, analyst, Carl Jung, heard of, heard of, heard of old Carl Jung. He said when, when people would ask mm -hmm. him, you know, how does it feel to be such a great psychologist, you know, help all these people, uh, better their lives and his response was you know what i'm not here to help people you know in that kind of a way i'm here to help people 
to, to, to help put people in a relationship with the transcendent, which he meant by mm, God. Amen. Like, and this wasn't young, what wasn't necessarily a Christian believer or, or even a believer, but mm. he recognized that the greatest thing as a psychologist, as an analyst, he could do was to put people in relationship with the truth. Mm. Because wow. once he could do that, then everything else would fall in place. Mm. But if we're out of relationship with the truth, then our lives fall apart. So mm. even wow. even he said that, what Kierkegaard later said, what we're saying from Luke chapter 7, the greatest way that we can love people is to put them in a relationship with God, to help encourage their relationship with God. The greatest thing you can do for me is to ask about my relationship with God. And on and on it goes. The more Amen. we're tied into him, the more we're tied in to each other in love. Amen, brother. Amen. That's good. That's a good good end. Um, we hope you guys have a blessed day. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up. Um, you know, don't miss out on that. Um, I'm always challenged about what do you get or what do you do. But, um, you know, I'll figure something out, Lord willing. So God bless y'all, man. It's been a blessing spending time with you. Um, take care and God bless. 